Today we are painting toon style. <music> Greetings, I'm Alan from Bicephalo, and today we are going to learn the awesome toon style, made popular recently by Big Child Creatives. If you don't know who they are, what are you waiting for? Go follow them on their social media. To begin, we have to say that there are a lot of painting styles. Think about all of the styles besides the step-by-step -step Games Workshop Signature 1. Styles like Hyperrealism, The Amazing and Dirty Grim Dark, the characteristic cell shade of the comic style, and the list goes on. It's true that all the styles depend on the interpretation of the painter, and it's also true that every style is awesome in its own unique way. The most important thing about painting styles is that learning a new way to paint your minis is going to help you to paint better, way faster. The toon style is very interesting because it does not rely on the cell shading to create planes or volumes. Instead, it relies on light sources and high contrast to create its look. This means that this style uses a selected light source, from which we will be placing highlights and shadows. Now it's finally time to give it a try, so get ready! As always, I'll prime the model with Vallejo Primer Black, using one drop of water for each 4 drops of primer. So I make sure that the primer coat is thin, and also to avoid any clogging on the airbrush. Because I'll be using really vibrant colors, I'll apply a zenithal white. An awesome trick to get a white, thin but opaque layer is to thin down the white paint with acrylic white ink. This will help you to get a good result without having to apply many layers. It's time to paint the base colors in all of the model. Make sure that the paint is thinned down correctly to avoid getting brush marks. It's way better to apply two or three thin layers, so be patient and let them fully dry. Make sure that you finish all of the base colors. You will see some variation because of the zenithal priming. That's good, because it will bring some tonal variation to the model. It's really important to select a focal point from which the light will be impacting the colors in all of the model. This time I selected the upper left corner. A good advice is to take a picture of your favorite view of the miniature and draw a light source on it, so it can assist you with the color placing. Now it's time to start highlighting. I decided that my light would be on the upper left corner. So I'll start placing them in the parts more exposed to the light. For this step, it's very important to get an opaque layer. We will be working on the smoothness of the transition between each color. But for now, just make sure to place enough layers on the highlighting step. Now, mix both blues to get a midtone and thin it down to a glaze consistency. Then place it with the small torches over the limit of both colors. Use as many layers as you need understanding that the level of smoothness of the transition depends on the part that you are painting. Since this is an illustration style, you don't need things to get really smooth or you won't get that tune vibe, especially on the non-metallic metal since it's more about using rough lines.
It's really important to say that this style does not rely on cell shading. It uses color saturation, artificial lights, to expose volumes, letting us know how light would interact with different materials in a cartoon or comic style. I'll place the shadows, making sure that they will help me to boost the volumes of the model, placing them on the opposite way of the light. It's important to be patient and to select the correct spots for the shadows. You can work with any number of highlighting and shadow steps by reducing its size each step. But I advise you to don't use more than two or three steps so you can get a tuned result. As you can see, the shadow skin tone that I selected may look really dark, but it's perfect for what I'm aiming for. You only need to smooth the skin as we did in previous steps. Now I will use black for the eyes, then I'll use white leaving a small white outline. A little blue into the eye. A black dot. And finally, a white dot. And this is the result. This is a fascinating painting style that it's worth to give a try. It's more logical to apply it on minis or models that look like cartoons like the chibi ones that comes in Arcadia Quest or Super Dungeon Explorer. I hope that you have learned something today, and that this video was helpful for you. I remind you that we have painting live streams each Friday, and online lessons. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. I ask you to give us a like, a comment, and to share it with your friends. Finally, be sure to follow us in all of our social media so you can see all that we are doing here on Bicephalo Board Games.